My name is Mary Ann Leeson, and I was born here in Burlington. Skiing has always been a passion in my family, and I was on skis on the hill in our backyard by the age of two. I am the youngest of four, and at the age of seven, I followed my siblings into ski racing at our local hill, Glen Eden. Much to my parents' disgust at the time, <laughs> when I was 10, I decided to give snowboarding a go. I borrowed a friend's board and boots, went to the top of the mountain, which was a 2,000 foot vertical, and got my first taste of this amazing sport. When I reached the bottom of the mountain, I told my parents I never wanted to ski again. Only being 10 years old at the time, this was a pretty bold statement to make, so I ended up ski racing for two more years under protest. <laughs> However, by the age of 12, I was so determined to switch to snowboarding that my parents agreed to enroll me in the newly formed snowboard racing program at Glen Eden Mountain Heights Racing Club. I discovered very quickly that I had passion for snowboarding and snowboard racing. At the time, snowboarding was still in its infancy and only just being accepted as a serious sport. I had some great successes and in 2004 was lucky enough to be invited to the brand new provincial team and then in 2006 was honored to be asked to join the Canadian National Development Team. My training is based in Calgary, but this summer in search of quality winter training conditions, the team travels to New Zealand. We've also trained in Oregon at our national training facility on Barnard Glacier in British Columbia. Before you get any ideas about my wonderful five-star traveling experiences, let me tell you about our daily routines. The route into the Glacier Base Camp is a four and a half kilometer hike on a steep logging road. We sleep in giant tents at the base of the hill. Our day starts at 5 a.m. with stretching and biking. After breakfast, snow cats transport us to the top of the mountain for training. We go all out for five hours on the slope, then back to our tents for lunch and a nap. We meet again later for more fitness training and then more food and back to bed. Our lives revolve around three key things, train, sleep, and eat. Food is extremely important for me. I burn on average 5,000 calories a day, which is, which is equivalent to feeding a family of three. I need to replace those calories and more to maintain my strength. As you can see, I'm not the biggest of people. I'm told <laughs> on a daily basis to eat more. I need to eat seven meals a day. It becomes more of a chore than a pleasure, and as you can imagine, my grocery bills are huge. <laughs> I love snowboarding. It's what I live for. I love the competition and I love the lifestyle. In my quest for gold, I've met some truly inspiring and interesting people who all share in a common goal of becoming a public champion. But my journey hasn't been easy. Already, I have broken my collarbone, my leg, and most recently, my board. Breaking my board was heartbreaking for me, but even more for my mom and dad's checkbook. <laughs> there are all types of different challenges that I face in racing. There's the money, of course, the time it takes to train, and the mental dedication needed to achieve my dreams. Mental strength is one of the most important and most trying aspects of racing. It manifests itself in many different forms. One of the biggest challenges in the mental game is pressure. Pressure from others, pressure from yourself, and pressure from the situation. The more important the race, the more challenging it is, and the more pressure you feel. You need to find a, a way to deal with this pressure. The way I deal with this is by pushing the race and everything that entails out of my head. I only think turn to turn. Sometimes I catch myself thinking about the outcome instead of being in the moment, and that can be disastrous. For example, two years ago at Nationals, as the defending junior champion, I qualified in a great position and was expecting and expected to do well. I had my mind on the result and not the race. I had a great first run in finals but fell on my second run. I was knocked out and the lower seater rider went through to the next round. I was really disappointed in myself for not taking advantage of a huge opportunity, but these are the lessons that you need to learn. My biggest support and sponsor to date is Creekside Bed and Breakfast, my mom and dad, <laughs> who began their business to support my Olympic quest. And I want to say thanks, mom and dad, for all your love and support. I know you sacrificed a lot for my dream. The trouble is, it means my bedroom is often rented out, and sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to sleeping in tents. <laughs> On a more serious note, as you can imagine, the cost of all this is quite dramatic, and the quest for gold lottery is really important, as it does contribute part to my training expenses. The quest for gold lottery was launched in 2006. Since then, $23 million in funding has been generated to help approximately 8,000 athletes. 
some of whom participated in the 2000 Summer Olympics in Beijing, China. Proceeds from the lottery support amateur athletes in Ontario through direct athlete assistance. 70% of ticket sales receipts go directly to athletes, while the remaining 30% supports enhanced coaching and provides competitive and training opportunities for athletes in the amateur sport. It encourages athletes to stay in Ontario to live and train. Unfortunately for me, I have to find the bigger mountains for my training backdrop, and this obviously adds even more to my expenses. I received 7000 from the Clutch for Gold Lottery, plus 500 modeling fee to appear on the tickets. Who would have thought that raising down a mountain of breakneck speeds would be considered modeling? <laughs> in addition, this year, the Canada Games Council and the Foundation for Athletes and Sport Training awarded 40 fast track athlete grants for 2000 each. It is awarded to Canada Games level athletes who are targeted and on the pathway to excellence at the national, international, and Olympic team level. This grant received over 500 winter sport applications this year, and for 2008, I was one of the lucky 40 athletes who awarded this grant. The 9,500 that I received this season has been such a help. Without Quest for Golden Sport Canada, I would not have been able to attend summer camps. These camps are so important to enable me to start the new season strong and ready to compete. I am so grateful for their support, and I am honored to be featured on the Quest for Gold tickets and to represent all Ontario snowboarders. The expenses of my sport can be very stressful. My season costs about 40 grand. I try to offset some of the comp expenses by working in the summer in between training camps. Last summer I worked at a golf course doing maintenance and also as a child camp counselor. Unfortunately, this takes me away from valuable training. If anybody is interested in helping support my cause, all contributions, no matter how big or small, would be so appreciated. Please have a look at my website, MarianneLeeson.com, which has kindly been set up at his own expense by local businessman Mark Palmer of PeopleWorks.com. The website will have information on my quest for gold, including my weekly blog and my thoughts and training, photographs, and a section of the way to help me with sponsorships. That being said, I feel very lucky and privileged to be able to follow my dream, see places I would never really normally see, meet great people along the way, and have an incredible support system with my family and friends behind my dream. Hopefully you'll be hearing from me again in the future, maybe not here like this, but standing on the podium listening to the Canadian National Anthem at the Winter Olympics. Thank you.